All right, and Madden Ken Rende here with Bay RJ to introduce this fantastic matchup of our leading two charlatans versus yellow team to introduce the charlatans with the classic Jose Zampano here in the Roke. He's in a big blue ship. It's a beautiful ship. And what has he brought with him? He's brought the Cyclone. He's brought the Scythe, the Talwar, and the Slasher. I think they were baited into choosing Shield or Force, more like it, by the other team and their choices. Bay, you want want to talk about the other team's choices. I do indeed. Um, Hyperion, Myrmidon, and uh, Algos have come in at 30 uh, for the other team, and um, got Ogora and Griffin at the back line there. Um, so we see a bunch of drones here spawned out by both teams. Um, looks like DPS drones mostly um, from the other team, and they are rushing directly towards, looks like, the enemy scythe. Yeah, so they're going to go after the Scythe, which makes a lot of sense. Doesn't have any rep strength. You know, they're probably going to try and... I would have thought they'd try and maybe jam it, but I guess they're just going to jam this Slasher, which, as you said, is is a much better bet for the jams. But they're going to take... The Algos is going to take a good amount of damage. Well, I don't think... You know, they don't have the Caracal, so they're not going to have that instantaneous explosion that you see from some other teams. There is also a bunch of shield reps there, um, tech, uh, medium shield rep bots on that side that's going to help keep it alive a little bit, but he is taking a ton of damage now. He's down to 63% shield already. He's trying to MWD now well, to, to mitigate some damage, um, but there's drones there, there's med lots of medium and light drones there. The other team have put out um, that are chewing through him pretty quickly. Um, a lot of teams make the mistake, I think, of putting heavy drones and sentries on a scythe. Uh, um, neither do as well, I don't think, as lots of medium drones, because I have a lot of hit points, um, so if you're hitting it, you will kill it pretty quickly, um, whereas the heavy drone struggles to hit it because of its speed. These medium drones are keeping up with it just fine. You see a little bit of staggered damage there as the drones, they catch up, they do a couple of volleys, and then they they break because of the mechanics, or sorry, I guess they stall yeah. uh, their speed, and then they have to wait a little bit to catch up. This uh, slasher, though, diving straight in. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, too, the Scythe, he's right at that edge of peak recharge, is that Algos is actually breaking, and if that Algos breaks, I think that's going to be a deciding factor. I don't think the Scythe goes down if that Algos breaks. I think they don't have enough medium drones on him anymore to get past that peak recharge, with him MWDing essentially running away from the other, te from the other team, literally. That's a, that's a good move, but the Algos now is, is repping. I don't know if that was bait or just a bad momentary, or maybe even a... a uh, something else that we missed, like a jam. But uh, so the Algos is now catching reps again. But the Scythe, he's surviving. He he's doing just fine. He never made it below about forty-one percent. I was watching him really closely because if he makes it below thirty-five, essentially he's a dead man walking. Yeah, definitely. He's uh, he they um the other team now have switched drones out. They switched to close range drones. They've gone for um the bunch of ogre drones from the Mermid on the Hyperion come out now as it looks like they've got onto the rock. Uh, and it looks like both of those big ships now are gonna grapple that rock and, and, and play with him. Um and the side has gonna have to work really hard to keep him up now. The Algos there just got caught out of position, I think. I think he was just kind of like floating there, just kind of not really worried. I know I shouldn't be able to die here. And then suddenly Roke, because with Null, it can hit out to like 30, 40 kilometers if it like plays things right in deep fall off, but that's all you need to be able to hurt. And Algos, Josie Zampani now taking a ton of damage from these big that's heavy so drones. so much damage. He's already using his ancillary, and I don't know if he's going to have enough with just the scythe on top of him. I mean, if you have a Hyperion on top of you, we saw it earlier today. Hyperion is do all the dps and it's literally that's that's the number we looked it into a calculator and it just said all the dps when you look at hyperion and that's what's happening here though it is taking some damage itself i i just i mean rogue versus hyperion the hyperion's gonna win yeah um the rogue, rogue the, the hyperion has got that rogue's blasters on top of it, which is doing a lot of damage and probably also the hams from the cyclone there I'm just trying to see who he's shooting it's probably the uh, uh hyperion they're going all in on the hyperion to try and break it but they're not doing very well the rogue's always start of shields this one by the other team here is working out beautifully so far i'm trying to see who the um griffin is jamming and it looks like the griffin's actually jamming the scythe now it's uh, jamming trying to get the scythe. he's trying to i don't think yeah. it's success i don't think it's successful still uh, I would imagine probably not. It's quite going to be quite be quite lucky to get a jam off with that uh, Mimitar and uh, sorry with the Glenty and Amar jammer on the scythe, but he might just get lucky. Um, the scythe hasn't got particularly high ECCM strength, um, uh, but it's um, 
you know, it should be okay, I think. Um, the Rogue now is actually catching shields, and he's actually doing okay. Uh, whereas the Hyperion looks like he's struggling a bit. This could really go either way. I'm not sure how this goes out. Tons of Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a DPS. cap question for that Hyperion. You know, it's got the answer. I mean, the Augur is going to give it a ton of help, but... You know, this is the question between you see armor and shield. You know, shield has a number of advantages. It's, you know, all, it's got passive rep. Uh, the answer really doesn't require cap. There's a lot of advantages here for, for that for that rope. Potentially, you can just hold up long enough to put the Hyperion in some sort of cap trouble. I don't know if that's realistic, but that could be one opportunity here. I question if you don't just try and blast off the Griffin. You know, we're making it through. If you can just say, hey, Tawar Slasher... Go, go surprise the griffin while nobody's looking. That'd be a cool pickup, and then also removing the jams. But at the same time, this rogue is now a deep, 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 deep shields. And I, I, I just don't know if he's going to last, especially once he hits recharge again. I think he had a recharge cycle go off, and that, that's what just happened there. Possibly, yeah. He's getting low, 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 low in shields now. But also that Hyperion's going to be out of its uh, local armor repper if it's been using that as well um, relatively soon. It's going to make it fairly close, I think, because the Hyperion has less buffer than the Rogue. Um, the Tower is in very, very close. I'm not sure if he's just trying to catch the attention of that Hyperion, taking a little heat off the Rogue a little bit there, or whether there's a little bit of misplay, I'm not sure. It looks like he's shooting drones, which is going to be like, pretty critical here, because if you can take out enough drones from the Myrmidon, then you can actually leave it, kind of like defang it, and make it completely useless. It's a very, very, very close brawl, this. Um, hoodies, I can't imagine the comms. I'd love to hear the comms from both of these teams matched up against each other. Um, the Rogue now dipping into half armor now. It doesn't look like he's going to be much longer uh, on grid here. Yep, Although but you know, he's busy, picking up he's shields too. He's still getting reps. Side. He's still using ancillary. I think the interesting thing too, you're seeing Kill and Dark Light versus Jose Zapano. Two fantastic pilots. You know, great pedigrees. They've been at the Alliance tournaments. They've done a Mar Championships. You're oh. seeing right here the best of the best competing. Look at that Hyperion though. He's down into hole. He's almost into hole. This Hyperion is really struggling to stay alive. As is the Rogue. I think whichever, basically whichever battleship goes down here first is going to um, lose their team the match. It's very, very close. The Hyperion though, they're bouncing like around 20-30% armor. Um, this is really, really close. I think this really going closer and closer and closer he can to the side to try and get a maximum optimal. Hopefully a lucky jam now would really probably secure him the match. Yeah, um, a jam right now on that side, then this is over for sure. Because that that Jose he he's he's got nothing left. I mean he's sitting there and essentially structure. I mean they're both they've both taken structure damage. Though that Hyperion I think has just hit cycle, and I'm not sure if Jose did as well. Jose now in hull. He's in half hull. He is still receiving shield reps. He's trying That's to keep him alive. He's rolling back up 10%, 5%. He's going down. We zoom in on the rope now. I don't know if the cameraman can. We see like fires breaking out all over that hull. <laughs> it does look like he's about to pop. As the... Yeah, he's gone. Oh! That's it. The hype he's still got plenty of arm left. He's now only facing the DPS of the Cyclone. Much really on the Slasher. Nothing much really on the Tower. I don't think that um, Jose's team can bring it back now. The team captain's down. I think that's pretty much game over. Yeah, you're but we'll seeing see good here. fights in local. Uh, see how was... We just had a seven-minute battle of a Rogue versus Iperian with some support trying to do crazy things. And at the end of the day, I, I don't know if there was a jam or not. I didn't catch that. It basically came down to Hyperion DPS plus Augur reps plus Algos reps, which I think made it probably a pretty key difference. It just it, That was a great battle. That was a great battle. It was a great battle, and I can I can just imagine all of the modules on all of these teams' uh, ships absolutely maxed out because that was a really really knife edge little match there. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the other team were just like kicking back, like you no know, chilling, like yeah, we got no this. No way. We the, we're just the 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 took Hyperion. structure damage. You don't take structure, structure damage. damage. I don't care. No, you don't need a tournament format usually. Anyway, you might do on tranquility. If you're trying to bait more kills, uh, you know. Um, so it looks like the Cyclone here has got lots, plenty yeah, of charges he's got left. Laughs, he's going to play around. But I, I, I just want to make one point clear. The other team with, with Lysis and Kill and Darklight and Hoodie Mafia, I think they made a play. They came in and they said, what we're going to do is we're going to throw a Griffin out. You know, after they saw the bans, after all those, you know, essentially logic ships got banned out, you know, kind of standard play in the Scorpion 2. They said, we're going we're gonna to pick the Griffin and we're going to force Charlatans to make a shield setup. And I think that they basically asked for exactly what they got, and then they ex executed. And that's what it came down to. Match, but I think they probably did this exact same battle on their own terms, and they found that they could win. Hyperion Rogue basically stand off, okay corral in the middle with the guns blazing, and it just worked out for them. I, I, I think this was their plan. Maybe, you know, one ship slasher versus something else, but I think basically the other team came in and said, we're doing this, and Charlton's, to some extent, played into their hands. 
Yeah, definitely. It played into their hands. Uh, this is another case of, I think, Red having really, really researched any possible opportunity to win against Blue. Kind of like setting up the picks of bands for the Blue teams to walk straight into the... To, in their hands and having a plan to match. I won't give away uh, Hoddy's the, the the name of this setup, but I know that Hoodie names. Uh, he's told me that he names like basically every single one of his setups, um, and so like uh, kind of yeah, it, it's kind of interesting to see that we, one of the kind of uh, outlandish things that he uh, has come up here here when like yeah, he knew and that to... would win. And interestingly, you could have maybe seen this coming as well from him picking Scorpion first, like knowing that he wanted to bring the Ogre. It's interesting. Yeah, I think it's a cool call. I mean, look, the, you know, we've now seen we've seen a Banson win, and we've seen a Griffin win. Came in today saying, "I'm going to see those two things." I would have thought I was crazy. And at the end of the day, we're going to see two seconds to go. Basically, all the team doing a great job winning this match with a Griffin. It's fantastic. Interesting though that they managed to keep three ships alive, so they don't have. Uh, Hoodie doesn't get the domination victory, um, but congratulations to Hoodie uh, for winning that match and very well played there by JC. Uh, but almost taking it very very nice edge fight great to watch and we'll pass it back to the uh the studio